Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 30 of Creating a Space Shooter with Godot. So we have the shield power-up, but we need another power-up. We need some variety here. So let's add a rapid fire power-up, so that when we collect it, the player can shoot even faster than they already can for a short period of time. Luckily, this is going to be pretty simple because we've pretty much already created all the things we need to add a new power-up like this. First of all, let's create a new instance of a power-up to represent the rapid fire power-up. Recall that we have this base power-up scene that we can inherit from. So let's go ahead and create a new inherited scene, and we will inherit from our power-up scene, and we'll go ahead and rename this to Rapid Fire Power-Up. And let's go ahead and save that as Rapid Fire Power-Up. Now the only thing we need to do scene-wise is just change the icon that is used for this particular power-up. In my case, the texture is the same, I just need to modify the texture region to be a different icon. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag my texture region down here to the sword looking icon instead. There we go. So now our rapid fire power up has a different icon than the shield power up. And the next thing we have to do is remove the script from rapid fire power up and add a new one called rapid fire power up. I'm saying that so much. And we'll just make sure this extends the generic power-up script. Now, what do we need to do to implement a new power-up? Well, recall, we just need to implement this apply power-up method. So I'll go ahead and copy that from the base power-up script into the rapid fire power-up script. And this is where we are going to apply rapid firing to the player. Of course, we don't have a way to do that yet. So let's take a pause here. And let's actually figure out how we can do this. Let's refamiliarize ourselves with how player shooting works. So if we go to the player script, in the process function, remember this function runs many times a second, if the shoot button is being pressed, in our case the space bar, and this fire delay timer is not running, if it's stopped, we are allowed to shoot. So if that's the case, we spawn a bullet at each of the guns on the ship, and then we start the fire delay timer, we restart it, with some short delay, in this case 0.1 seconds by default. This way when the process function runs again, if the shoot button is being held but the fire delay timer is running, we do not shoot. We have to wait until another process function uh, runs where the shoot button is being pressed and this timer has completed. So in order to shoot rapidly, to shoot faster, all we have to do is change this fire delay to be a shorter value, that way the, you can shoot faster. Okay, let's go ahead and take this fire delay variable. And let me just move that down here a little bit. And let's not export it. Let's keep fire delay like set. And instead, we'll create a new export variable called normal fire delay. This will be the value that we set fire delay equal to under normal circumstances, shooting normally. So we'll set that equal to 0.1. Actually, I'm going to make it a little bit longer by default, 0.12, how's that? And then fire delay will start equal to normal fire delay by default. Let's also have an export variable called rapid fire delay. And that will be shorter than normal fire delay, let's say 0.08 instead of 0.12. And if we set fire delay equal to this, we will, we will shoot faster because this timer will be started for shorter amounts of time. So to apply the power up, we just need to change what fire delay is equal to. Of course, we want to do that only for a short amount of time. Now, if we look at the apply shield function, you'll notice that we, we coded this with a particular behavior that I described at the time, where if you call apply shield multiple times in a row, let's say the user collects multiple shield power ups back to back, then the amount of time that the shield is active for doesn't increase. It's not you know, five seconds plus five seconds when you collect the next one. Instead, we just restart the timer to whatever the last function call is here. Now, we can change that so that the time that the shield is available for is, gets added onto by this amount of time here. And I think that would be a little bit better. And then I think we want the same behavior for the new rapid fire power up that we're making. So we will come back to this but let's continue with the rapid fire power up for now. Let's create a function called apply rapid fire. And it'll also take in the amount of time that we want rapid firing to happen for. 
Now, of course, for this, we're going to need a timer so that we know when rapid fire time is up and we need to reset the fire delay. So in the player scene, let's just go ahead and create a new node under here. And we're going to create a new timer node. And this timer is going to be called rapid fire timer. And if we go here, we want to make sure that it does not auto start and we want to make sure that it is one shot. There we go. And then of course, we will go ahead and under the node, we will connect the timeout signal of the rapid fire timer to our player script. So now we have this down here. So I'm kind of jumping all over the place here, but let's work backwards. When the rapid fire timer finishes, when it times out, we want to reset fire delay equal to normal fire delay. That's all we need to do. Easy enough. But when we want to apply rapid firing, we want to make sure fire delay equals rapid fire delay. So that will actually enable us to shoot faster. And then we need to start the rapid fire timer or add on to the amount of time that's remaining by this amount of time here. So of course, what we could do is we could just say, um, well, we need to grab a reference to our rapid fire timer first. So let's go up here and let's create on ready var rapid fire timer. That'll be equal to dollar side rapid fire timer. Now we can use this timer. Let's go back down here. So when we do apply rapid fire, we can do rapid fire timer dot start for that amount of time. And this will have the same behavior as apply shield. If you collect multiple rapid fire uh, power ups, and this function is called multiple times, only the last one that you call is actually going to affect the timer, this is going to be the time we get set to. So instead, if we want to add on to that amount of time, we can simply start this timer with time plus however much time is remaining in the current timer. Dot, I think this, I think the property is time underscore left, like so. And of course, this should be rapid fire timer. There we go. So now we restart the timer with whatever time it had on it to begin with. It could have been zero if rapid firing wasn't in effect, or it could be some number if rapid firing is in effect, plus the amount of time that this function call should add to it. And we can actually do the exact same thing here for the shield timer. We can do time plus uh, invincibility timer dot time left. Now they will both have the same behavior and we kind of fixed a bug with apply shield. And then of course when the timer runs out we reset it equal back to normal fire delay. Everything should be just fine at this point in time. So let's go back to the rapid fire power up and in apply power up all we have to do is call player dot apply rapid fire for some amount of time. Let's say rapid fire time and let's go ahead and define that as an export variable up here, export bar, rapid fire time. We'll say they can rapid fire for four seconds per power. Okay, now all we have to do is actually get this power up spawning. So let's go into our spawner and let's add that power up to our power ups preload array. Add preload res power ups rapid fire power up dot t scene. And that will allow this power up to be, random, be randomly spawned, excuse me. And just for development purposes, let's change the max power up spawn time also equal to three seconds. That way we keep getting a lot of power ups just for testing purposes. Will this work? We will find out. Hey, there's our new power up. There is our rapid fire power up. So look at how fast I shoot now. And now look at how fast I shoot for four seconds, and then we go back to normal firing speed. It's a little bit hard to see. Let's try that again. So normal firing, rapid firing. The bullets are much closer together, and then it gets reset there. Much slower firing. There we go. And the shield, the shield power-ups are working. The shield now stays for a longer amount of time because I just collected multiple of the shield power-ups. That was not the case before, so we fixed that. That's working really nicely. Of course, it should still disappear like it did right then, and everything works just fine. There we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We got a few cool power-ups in our game now, 
And let me go ahead into the spawner and just change that max power-up spawn time back to 20 seconds so that we're not getting tons of power-ups. And thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode.